Hey, I figure the Apostle Paul gave his testimony a couple times in the book of Acts and some of his epistles. And I've given my testimony on the videos. I gave a testimony one time at the farmer's market. So let me go back to who I am and what I am. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I was saved April 21st, 1987. My name is Stiley Hayward, and I was born in New London, Connecticut in 1968. I grew up with two lost parents, no God, raised in the Catholic Church. I'm saying my parents were lost. My dad is still lost. My mom today is saved. And she has MS and other health conditions, but she knows where she's going to go when she dies. Her salvation happened about 2009, 2010. And I grew up in a home with a mom and dad. I love both my parents. But alcohol and women got the best of my dad. My mom's a hard-working woman. My mom is what built up in me that God used a conscience. My mom had to go through a lot. She had to go through out, uh, drinking of her husband, adulterous affairs. I had to grow up in that. There were many nights where I would be woken up out of bed and we go drive around to alcohol died out in the system. I grew up not as your common child and if my mom has any gray hairs today it's because of me. And I don't say that with pleasure and I don't say that with pride. My mom had a time with her, with my dad, and she had a time with me. I am a sinner. I did not honor my parents. I have given a false report. I have lied. And I've done many things contrary to the Word of God. Now, growing up, my grandma was saved out of a Baptist church. And right across the street from that Baptist church is St. Mary's Star of the Sea Catholic Church, where my grandpa went. And my grandpa, a, a Baptist, my grandpa, a Catholic, married and had two daughters, my mom. And I grew up with the church service with my grandpa Saturday nights going to St. Mary's Star of the Sea. And it did not ever thank God take. I remember the one thing that, that and there were many confusions of the, of the Catholic Church when I grew up. I really didn't know who Jesus was. But I remember when you went to this church, you had to go downstairs to use the bathroom. And as amazement to a child who's grown up with, with beer and alcohol, that when you walk through the hallway to get to the bathroom, there was a cooler there big cooler, soldier, stuff like that. And on that cooler in the Catholic Church was the Bud Man. And I don't know if you remember the 70s, I don't know if he was supposed to be a football player or whatever, but there was the Bud Man, red and white I believe it was, maybe blue. And he was the endorsement of Budweiser. And I thought kind of odd that here is a representation of beer on a cooler at a Catholic Church, but then again, I know the Catholic Church, and that was a perfect symbol for the Catholic Church. Because they were a church did not mean they subsided from drinking. And Lord forbid that I find out later that their alcohol is supposedly, by magic, the blood of Jesus Christ. And the wafer is supposedly to be the bread of Jesus Christ, 
and sinfully and wickedly, I had taken part of that in my childhood. And I would go with my grandpa, and I would see what brought to my attention was, you know, the, the icons, the imagery, the idols, the statues. And in the church they had around, they had the, what you would call the passion. From Jesus' trial, you know, when he fell underneath the cross and he's walking and he meets the women on the way to Calvary. And that stuck in my head. And <clears throat> I remember Christmas, I don't know if Easter, I remember my aunt and my mom would come sometimes and my grandmother would be there for the Christmas Mass. And it remarked to me today that my grandmother was saved, a Baptist. My grandpa wasn't saved and is now, I mean, he's in glory now. He got saved. I mean, we believe he was one of those Catholics that were saved, but is still in the church. More saved than anybody I, I would put the Bible to. And it always remarked to me on Christmas that, you know, you spoke about the birth of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was not born December 25th. I do not take part in the Mary Christ Mass. I avoid it. I do not put Christ back in Christmas because he was never in Christmas. But it remarked to me that, okay, Jesus was born. I understood that. The manger, there were not three wise men. But when it came around Easter, and I don't remember if the family came, but when Easter came, which is a Roman holiday, and it would be that Jesus arose from the grave. He died on Good Friday, which he did not. That's anti-scriptural. You can't get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. Unless you change math. And it always got me in the Catholic Church that when Jesus Christ arose out of the grave. And then when I would look up at the priest's head, I would see Jesus hanging there at St. Mary's. And he's still on the cross, nailed. And every time Easter came along, he came out of the grave and he was back nailed to that cross. And I grew up thinking that Jesus come out of the grave was nailed back to the cross. And that's exactly what the Catholic Mass teaches every time they do them. Christ died again. Christ died again. Christ died again. Christ died again. And when you read the book of Hebrews, Christ died once. Offered one sacrifice and then sat down. And there were times I would put a quarter in for the candles, and I don't know why I was doing that. I didn't know that you, you know, you're trying to get souls out of purgatory, but I would pay a quarter to God. Something like maybe he liked he like he wanted a candle lit, maybe he wanted light uh, to God. And there are times growing up as a child that troubles and problems. If you only imagine. And there was St. Joseph's Church right around the corner from where I live. And I would go in there to the altar, not massive service times, but I would go in there, the doors would be open, and I would go to the altar. I would pray to God. Not the Catholic God. Not the Baptist God, and not the God of the Bible, but to God. And I knew there was a God. And I knew something about Jesus. But I didn't know nothing. When I grew up in evolution that taught me dinosaurs, they never they never adapted to me. I didn't care. Thank God. We had a tree in our backyard that a witch lived in, me and Kevin. And we filled that tree up with rocks to keep the witch away. Lord forbid anybody try to cut that tree down with a chainsaw today. But I remember during that time looking up to the stars, looking up to the heavens, and God. And Kevin and I would cut earthworms to the sacrifice to God. God wanted earthworms. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where I got the idea from. I never opened and read the Bible. I had no idea what even a sacrifice was, but God wanted earthworms. And I stole. We had a camper. I would sneak into the camper and I would eat the cereal that was left over in the camper. 
and I was stupid enough to leave the cereal out in the bowls, and my mom would say, did you eat it? And I would lie. There was another time I was playing with matches, and I almost burned the whole backyard down in the wood pile. There was an innocent time where I took uh, poison ivy, shoe mat, I threw it into a campfire that we had, and my mom seriously got infested with poison ivy through the smoke and caused her a great deal of pain and suffering. And the thing I'm not going to get too deep into, but I had done things that a little boy should never have done. Should never have got involved in. I was even, I offered to pay a dollar and I slindled my way out of a dollar for what happened. I got to see things, I got to touch things, and I got to be with things I should never have been with. We would go, I, I couldn't remember get the city pier and the state pier, it was, there was two of them, two different places, behind the railroad station in New London. And I would walk down there with a fishing pole. And on the way there was a place called Bank Street. And Bank Street back then were the homeless people we called bums. And they were the prostitutes. And little Stiley Hay would be talking and hanging out with the prostitutes and the bums. And just talking to them. A little boy talking to people on the way. People I should have never had any association with at that age. But... It was an innocent age. I had a bike that I went everywhere. I always, and if you know New London, I went all the way to Ocean Beach and I went all the way over to the ghetto. I didn't go inside the ghetto, but I was in that area. I was around State Street. And if you know New London, that's a bad area to be in for a little boy. Again, I've seen things I should have never seen. Lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh, and events and things that happened that should never have been in my eyes. Worse than television. I had thoughts and ideas that a little boy should never have. I was a wicked sinner as a little boy. And I don't know how much my mom knew and how much she didn't know. There are times with a bicycle, as I've mentioned, and I should have been in the hospital if not dead. You know, growing up, we had ramps. And we would jump our bikes and tr and try to jump higher. And, and, and there, you know, ramps would cave in. you go flying over and bang your head on the sidewalk. And we didn't have helmets. And to that, to the glory of God, that I think there are many times in my life that I should have been dead. And there are times I believe wholeheartedly that the devil tried to kill me, knowing that the, that I would today would be a witness for Jesus Christ. I would make people angry because I preach Jesus and the gospel. And hopefully maybe get to a video after that. But I was born early, a month or two months early, and I spent the first months, born in September, and I believe I was still in an incubator after Christmas. I spent a lot of Christmases in hospital rooms overnight. And my dad told me about a time where I was massively sick and there was a snowstorm and we lived on a hill. There was no going up. My father had to go down the hill and take the longest way around to the hospital. Because any road you would go right led you up a hill to go to the hospital and you couldn't make it. You had to go all the way around down by Ocean Beach and you had to go up Ocean Avenue. And kind of an upgrade, but you could make it in snow. And I remember my dad telling me he had to go all that way and I was sick. I was an infant. And he's told me that when he got me to the hospital that they took me and flushed me into ice water to drop my temperature and there are times I, I believe it was called the Hong Kong flu and this very much high temperatures I've had as a child that should have killed me but by the grace of God 
I had one time at the blizzard in 78. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was thinking, but I tied a spark plug to a tree. I was going to swing, and I swung. And I went headfirst into a snowdrift, deeper than what I was. And it's the middle of the winter. Windows are closed. And I'm screaming to my mom. My grandma was there, I believe. And by the grace of God, probably that angel that Jesus says watches over the children spoke to my mom and my grandma or whoever. And they come outside to find that I was in a snowdrift and I was going to die. And yank the idiot me out. I had another time, and I'm not going to go into reasons, but I had taken water that had acid, and they still don't know what that acid was today. And I put it into a bathing a little children's swimming pool, and I, I put myself in that water and had, in my legs, I had uh, chemical burns. And thank God I was able to produce two children. That are serving and loving the Lord today. So I have been involved in things in my life. We had one time the, uh, a big fair in Springfield, Massachusetts called the Big E. We were in a camper. My mom and grandma were up in the front. We were in the back of the camper. We are not supposed to be. I went to get a soda out of, my, out of the refrigerator. Leaned against the back door. And the door opened. I flew out with my soldier, with my mom driving away. I don't know what made her stop and get me and put me back in. I remember another time, first or second grade, that the guy met me at the crossing guard, befriended me, lied to the crossing guard. I had no idea at that time. At, at that time, lied to the crossing guard, told her that I was his relative or something, walked me home. And I remember telling my mom going upstairs, the guy was waiting out the door. The guy told told me to get, get my mom. I said, Mom, there's a stranger. There's a stranger downstairs who wants to talk to you. And I can remember the terror in my mom's eyes when she came back upstairs and chastised me. And explained to me what could have happened. Who knows what would happen if that was today? I could have been molested. I could have been stolen. I think I was walking hand in hand. That I don't remember. But I remember him lying to the crossing guard. I remember... second or third grade. I remember for show and tell, telling the, t the kids and the teachers how awful, terrible accident my mom got into so I could have something to tell for show and tell. I remember the teacher, my brother coming to get me in the classroom. I remember the teacher asking my brother, well, how's your mom doing? And he's like, well, you're doing well, what's going on? And I had to live the lie that I told. I remember I told my mom something about my dad that I wasn't supposed to tell, and that pretty much ended our relationship. He was mad. I remember my dad one time telling me when I said that, you know, I don't like to smoke in the truck that we were going somewhere. He, he pulled the truck over and said, if you don't like to smoke, you can get out. I remember another time the, the devil could have killed me was we didn't have seat belts. We didn't use in order to see out the pickup truck. My dad would put me on top of his toolbox. I would sit top of the toolbox so I can look up. Well, we turned around the corner. The door opened me and the tools and the toolbox went flying out. And there was a grate, a, a, a storm grate there. I remember seeing the, the sockets rolling down into the, the storm and I survived that. And I love my dad. 
But years later, I, I smoked. And in freshman year, when I went to the, when I went to the, the bus stop the first time to take the bus to go to Tech, I wasn't into peer pressure smoking. I saw the sophomores there smoking cigarettes, and I went up myself and said, let me have one. I bummed a cigarette, my own self. And I kept bumming and bumming. Until finally they say, you know, you got to buy your own habit. And I would steal money from my parents to smoke. And I would hide my smoking that I did. Because my father's boss would drive by every morning. Well, the Lord must have had it one day that he was late because because about that time he came by, he never came by. So I figured maybe I missed him. So I lit up and he come by later and caught me. And evidently went to my dad and thank God he told him. And my dad told my mom. And my mom was the correction in the house for me. Her mode of correction was a yardstick and I joked that I've gone more miles than Joe Montana. And I deserved every one of them beatings and I didn't get as many as I should have got. And I can't name all the times I was beaten, but there are times I should have been beaten that I wasn't. And I shoplifted. And there was many times I was going to shoplift something that my mom put the fear of God in me and the strong conscience that I thank God that my mom gave me that there are times I didn't shoplift when I wanted to shoplift and there were times I shoplifted. There's one particular time I, I shoplifted. I got out and my heart pricked me that I went back and put it back in the package and put it on the counter and walked out. That's because of my mom. Later on, though, what alcohol done to me growing up into my mom, I drank. And I had my own Bacardi. I brought my own. So I smoked and I drank. And I crowds with women. And growing up young, I, I gave my mom gray hair because I was seeing a, a woman that was much older than I was. And that troubled my mom much. Though still I kept my virginity. I've seen and touched things I shouldn't have touched. And I went against my mom. And I did her much harm. Unsaved. Both of us unsaved. Then my mom found out my dad was seeing someone else. And the confrontation was at home and When I found out, my dad was there and I took him by the shirt and I, I lifted him against the wall. I think even my mom was shocked. I didn't hate him. I was just angry that he did that against my mom. My mom would move out the front door while his girlfriend was moving in the back door. And I get mad at my dad, I go move with my mom. When I got mad at my mom, I go moving with my dad. Back and forth, back and forth. And I got a job driving a tow truck. Actually, I got a job driving for security and I went driving for a tow truck. And I would sleep in the dispatch office and do dispatching because I didn't want to go home. And I really, I had a home to go to, but I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go to my dad. I didn't want to go to my mom. I hated my father's girlfriend for what she'd done. I didn't say, hey, I didn't, I just liked, I mean, I prayed for her soul. 
I just liked my grandma Hayward because she would allowed my dad and that woman to go over to the house while my parents were still living. And there were, there were people in the family, oh, you know, you should go. I went and sit, I went and saw my grandmother and I got the witness to my grandmother. And the three times with the witnesses of my wife Tracy now, three times she just outright rejected Jesus, God, and the gospel. And probably she's dead and probably in hell today because she rejected Jesus. And the family don't like me saying that, but that's the truth. So getting back to church, I got to an age where I would pretend, lie to my grandpa, I was sleeping, I wouldn't wake up. And time would get, you know, he he couldn't try to wake me up no longer, he was going to be late, so he would leave. I got left home. Yay. And finally, the time became, they asked me, he said, Stolly, do you want to go to church anymore? I said, no. And they, they, they let me. You don't want to go to church? All right, you don't have to. You're going to make your grandpa upset. Now, I have a lot of respect for my grandpa. He was hardworking. He's a World War II sea, sea beer. Great testimony listening to him over, out in the South Seas. He built churches. He built he built hospitals. He built fire departments. I, I can tell you the places where I, I was with him fixing roofs and he was in a Catholic church and he was saved. And I sleep over at my grandparents' house every Saturday, every weekend, I'll say. I know it's Saturday. And my grandpa left in me the impression every night as I would be laying in, in the living room on my cot, his cot from the military. He'd be, wa he'd be watching a, a ball game on TV and listening to a ball game in the earplug of his radio. <laughs> And then it would get silent. And he would use the light of the television. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be sound. I don't think he wanted the big light to wake me up or disturb him. I knew what he was doing. A Catholic would have his King James Bible open and he would read it every single night. I'm saying like 30 minutes. And I would hear in the other room the Bible close. And I would hear the chair creak. And I would hear the floor creak. As he would get down his knees. And what seemed like eternity he would pray. I know he prayed for his daughters. I know he prayed for his wife. And I know he prayed for his grandchildren. He get up, go in the bathroom, brush his teeth, and all that, and he would go to bed. I would say I lived with that fifty-two weeks in the year, as far as I remember. He was corny as anything. He was funny. He was, and yet he was serious. I remember the first time with my grandpa. They told him, you know, whatever it was, take Stolly to McDonald's and get him some. And he never been to McDonald's. He never been to Burger King. I can always remember the confusion he had to order me a hamburger and a drink. And he had coins in his ashtray in the truck. Which I'm sorry to say I stole from that too. I stole and I lied when I was a child. And that corrals, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. I thought of myself more than I thought of others, pride of life. And there are things I've done I shouldn't have done. There are sins that are in my past that are under the blood of Jesus Christ. From every sin that I was born of sin of a, of a woman to April 21st, 1987, all the sins that you don't know about, some I have mentioned 
and the ones that I know about, and the ones I forgot about, are under the blood and are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Because I could not pay for those sins. I could not see no priest in the closet like I've done. I walked in those books and I confessed the sins. When I grew up in the Catholic Church, Mary, I didn't know Mary. Thank God. I had no idea what Mary was supposed to do, which she don't. Thank God. It did not take. But through the Catholic Church, I did get a God. But I didn't get the priest. I didn't get the Mary. I didn't get the Mass. I didn't get the garbage of the, the Catholic Church. But I knew about it. It didn't stick. So there came a day, and my grandma would, would get me on two things. She'd get me on smoking. I thank God she prayed for me because her prayers had me to quit smoking. Long after. Long after I got saved. But my grandma would also come to a point, she got to a point that she started inviting me out to a church. And of course I said no. Church is boring. Church is stupid. Stop asking me. And every time I see her, again, come out to church. Now let me tell you something. Seventeen, eighteen years old. And I can tell you, a good Baptist church in Waterford, Connecticut. I can tell you about all kinds of churches in New London. Matter of fact, there was a church behind my house. I could hear them sing. It was a black church. I could hear them singing Sunday mornings in my yard. And you wouldn't believe the filth that some of them members of that church got me involved. Don't tell me every church member is, is, is holy and righteous. They're not. But I'm not holy and I'm not righteous either. So, I don't know how long it went. But come to church. Come to church. And finally one day I told Grandma. I said, listen, Grandma. And it was her, my brother, my aunt, and my uncle were going. And my uncle was invited by a co-worker at work. They started going and my grandma started going in. So finally I just told grandma, I said, listen. If I tell you I'll go to church and go to church, will you shut up and leave me alone? She said, yeah. You come once, I'll be happy. And I told her, I mean it. If I go, don't you after that say, come to the church. I don't want to hear any more. She said, okay. When I told that testimony to someone, they told me that was rude and crude. But I, that's 100% honest. I went to church to shut my grandmother up. I mean, I was a teenager. I lived the whole world. I knew everything. I had my own car, had my own job, lived between mom and dad. So I went to church. Open door Baptist church, Pawkatuck, Connecticut, a little tiny church. This is this one it was on uh, Cleveland Street. I went there. I wouldn't go there today. It's a vile and wicked. But I heard the gospel. And I'm going to tell you, I went to church to hear the gospel, but I stand to, you're supposed to go in the world and preach the gospel. I'm not for inviting people to church if they're lost. But am I totally against it? Absolutely not, because this is how I got saved. I wish my grandmother would have had a Explained to me, but she did. So I went to church, I heard the gospel. I got saved. No, I didn't. I went home. And I'm telling you, I went home that afternoon as much as a boy 
who has stolen something out of the store guilty. But I didn't know what the guilt was. When I shoplifted that day and I stole something, I knew exactly what I was wrong. I stole something. I took something that wasn't mine. I had to put it back. And when I left church that day, there was a guilt in my heart. I was guilty. So I got my grandma on the phone and I said, Grandma, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I need to talk to somebody. And she said, I'll call the pastor. Now, I don't know if I went to church that Sunday night or Wednesday. I don't know. But my grandma said, the pastor said, he's got a couple men in church. If I can come over to her house on Saturday. April 21st, they'll talk to me. And I said, well, will they explain to me what, what's going on? She said, yeah. I said, okay. It was afternoon, I know that. So come Saturday, I came over and Joseph Caswell was in a Bible. And I can't tell you exactly what happened, everything that happened, but he told me I was a sinner and I knew I was a sinner. And he told me I was going to hell. On April 21st, 1987, no one ever told Stiley Haver he's going to hell. No one ever told me I was a sinner. My mom had corrected me for doing wrong. Thank God for that. If I had been caught by the police, they would have told me I was wrong. I'm telling you, one night I went out, I got drunk, and I drove a car. Drunk. D-U-I. And I was caught by the police. I was guilty. When I went to church that day and I heard the preaching of the gospel, I was guilty. I had no idea what. And with the Bible, I was shown that I was a sinner and I was going to hell. And I don't want to go to hell. I didn't say, what must I do to be saved? I don't know what I said. But it came to, you got to repent and you got to get right with God. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember the words. But I remember kneeling down at my grandma's coffee table. And Joe Caswell was to the right of me. And I prayed, and I don't remember the prayer, but I asked God to save my soul. I asked God not to let me go to hell. <clears throat> I told God I was a sinner, that I was. And I needed to be saved. And on the afternoon of April 21st, 1987, Jesus Christ came into my life, washed me clean, washed me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and every sin from that date to the day I was born was cleansed in the blood that was shed upon Calvary's tree. I came out of the empty tomb, not to a Christ that was nailed to the cross, but to a Christ that sits at the right hand of the Father that offered that one sacrifice for me, I became saved. The Holy Spirit came inside of me. And I became a child of God. And I had no idea what had happened. All I knew was. I was not no longer going to hell. So I. Went back to church Sunday morning. But something had happened there. And something had already began to work in my life as a Christian that, that afternoon on Saturday. You say, what happened? My grandma was a neat freak. She salmonized and cleaned everything, dusted everything, and you didn't leave fingerprints anywhere in that house. And the day that my name was written down in the Lance Book of Life, 
My grandmother, who was saved and written the Lamb's Book of Life, was angry that we moved her coffee table centerpiece, that my name would be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, but you moved my, sand, my, my centerpiece and you got fingers on my coffee table. I didn't know nothing back then, but that had already to start. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That all that lived godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer for it. started the day I got saved. That afternoon. So Sunday, the next day, I went to church. And it was a testimony time we had at church. He raised his hand. I raised my hand. And I stood up and I said, yes, I like. I said, I like to tell everyone here I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And after the church service, people came and shook my hand and said, you did a great, you know, talk to me. And the pastor told me, he says, you need to be baptized. I, What's baptism? We, we got a thing downstairs. We, 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 and he took me in his office and explained to me the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It's not a means of salvation, but it's a public testimony, much more than what you told in the church that you're going to die, and he explained to you, you're going to die to sell, you're going to come out, you're going to live for Christ. I need to be baptized? Yes. Okay. When? Next Sunday. Okay, let's do it. Bring, you know, clothes and all that, and we'll, okay. So I left the pastor's office. I'm going to be baptized. And I went to church Sunday night, and I went to church Wednesday night. Well, let me close with this one thing, and maybe I'll do a testimony after my salvation. All right, so I met the pastor's office. He explained to me baptism. He explained to me what I had done, how I'm saved, and I'm a child of God. You know, to really make sure that I knew what had happened. And the baptism, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to rely on the water that saved my soul. So, Saturday I left church. Walkertown, Connecticut, and the very next place I lit, I went was to my dad's house. And my dad was working on his greenhouse, which became multiple businesses. And I went up to my dad. He come up to me. Now, I remind you before I'm going to tell you what happened right now. I remind you about a month, if not a couple months. I, there was a time before this moment of April twenty second. April 21st, 87, I would say. April 27th. But there was a time before that that I had gone over to my dad's house and I had a paper bag and I had opened the paper as I had cold beer. I gave my dad a beer and I had a beer and we're sitting there, we're drinking a beer and my dad's like, oh, wow. I'm having a beer with my son. This is great. On April 22nd, the day after I received Christ as my Savior, the afternoon, at, at, at 773 Broad Street Extension, Waterford, Connecticut, I received Christ as my Savior. The 22nd, at 9 Whiteman Street, New London, Connecticut, in my father's backyard, I said, Dad, you're going to hell. I have never witnessed, I didn't know anything. My father told me, he said, don't you tell me to go to hell. I says, no, Dad. Listen, I got saved yesterday. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I am no longer going to hell. My sins are through the blood of Jesus. Unless you get saved, unless you put your faith in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. And let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me bring my calculator here real quick. It's 2019. Subtract 1987. 32 years have I been witnessing to my dad about salvation from the day after I was saved. My dad not got saved yet. And I'm not giving up because he's not dead yet. The 21st I got saved, the 22nd I began witnessing. 
The 22nd, I went to church and told everybody I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Joe Caswell was over there sitting there, was there that did it for me. He, he witnessed it at my grandma's house. And at my grandma's house was my grandma, was my brother, was Joe Caswell. I think Joe Whitmore. But he said no, but I, I, I thought it was him. And my grandpa, who was in the Catholic Church, is sitting in his room. I don't know how much he got out of it with us in the living room. I began witnessing the day after I was saved. And the very first person I witnessed to was my dad, the one who had caused great trouble in my family. The man I stole against, the man I told him about Jesus and hell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right now, take a little break, upload everything to be here, and Lord willing, I'll get to you after my salvation. And I did pretty much more sin than I did before I was saved. And I'm not glorified, and I chuckle that I thank God that he's righteous, and I thank God he's forgiving. Because the devil was still after me. Let me close for now, and Lord willing, hopefully I get to the second part after salvation.